Purvara temples. A Purvara temple. The two walled perimeters that surround the remaining two yards to the interior are oriented to the four cardinal points. The second yard's wall perimeter, which measures about 225 meters per side, surrounds a terraced area that consists of four rows containing 44, 52, 60, and 68 Prabhara temples. Respectively, each has a height of 14 meters and measures 6 times 6 meters at the base, or 224 structures in total. The 16 temples located at the corners of the rows face two directions, the remaining 208 structures open to only one of the four cardinal directions. The middle zone consists of four rows of 224 individual small shrines. There are great numbers of these temples, but most of them are still in ruins and only some have been reconstructed. These concentric rows of temples were made in an identical design. Each row towards the center is slightly elevated. These shrines are called Kandi Purwara, Guardian or Complementary Temples, the additional buildings of the main temple. Some believe it was offered to the king as a sign of submission. The Purwara are arranged in four rows around the central temples. Some believe it had something to do with four castes, made according to the rank of the people allowed to enter them. The row nearest to the central compound was accessible to the priests only, the other three were reserved for the nobles, the knights, and the simple people respectively. While another believed that the four rows of Purwara had nothing to do with four castes, it was just simply made as a meditation place for priests and as a worship place for devotees. Architecture The cross-section of Shiva Temple The architecture of Prambanan Temple follows the typical Hindu architecture traditions based on Vastu Shastra. The temple design incorporated Madala temple plan arrangements and also the typical high towering spires of Hindu temples. Rambadan was originally named Shiva Guha and dedicated to the god Shiva. The temple was designed to mimic Maru, the holy mountain, the abode of Hindu gods, and the home of Shiva. The whole temple complex is a model of the Hindu universe according to Hindu cosmology and the layers of Loka. Just like Bora Badur, Rambadan also recognizes the hierarchy of the temple zones, span from the less holy to the holiest realms. Each Hindu and Buddhist concept has its own terms, but the concepts are essentially identical. Either the compound site plan, horizontally, or the temple structure, vertically, consists of three zones. Burlika, in Buddhism, K, Mad, 2, lowest realm of common mortals, humans, animals also demons. Where humans are still bound by their lust, desire and unholy way of life. The outer courtyard and the foot, base, part of each temples is symbolized the realm of Burlika. Uvarlika, in Buddhism, Rupadatu, the middle realm of holy people, occupied by rishis, ascetics, and lesser gods. People here begin to see the light of truth. The middle courtyard and the body of each temple symbolizes the realm of Uvarlika. Svarlika, in Buddhism, Arupadatu, the highest and holiest realm, reserved for the gods. Also known as Svargaloka. The inner courtyard and the roof of each temple symbolizes the realm of Svarlika. The roof of Brahman and temples are adorned and crowned with Ratna, Sanskrit, jewel. The shape of Brahman and Ratna took the altered form of Vaitra that represent diamonds. In ancient Java temple architecture, Ratna is the Hindu counterpart of the Buddhist stupa, and served as the temple's pinnacle. During the restoration, a well which contains a crypt stone casket was discovered under the center of the Shiva temple. The main temple has a well 5.75 meters deep in which a stone casket was found on top a pile of charcoal, earth, and remains of burnt animal bones. Sheets of gold leaves with the inscription Varuna, God of the Sea, and Parvada, God of the Mountains, were found here. The stone casket contained sheets of copper, charcoal, ashes, earth, 20 coins, jewels, glass, pieces of gold and silver leaves, seashells and 12 gold leaves, 
which were cut in the shapes of a turtle, an a serpent, a altar, and an egg. Reliefs. Ravana kidnapping Sita while the Chitayunda left trying to help her. Grandpa and Bar Relief. Ramana and Bhagavata Purana. The temple is adorned with panels of narrative Bar Reliefs telling the story of the Hindu epic Ramana and Bhagavata Purana. The narrative Bar Relief panels were carved along the inner balustrades wall on the gallery around the three main temples. The narrative panels on the balustrade read from left to right. The story starts from the east entrance where visitors turn left and move around the temple gallery in a clockwise direction. This conforms with Pradaksina, the ritual of circumambulation performed by pilgrims who move in a clockwise direction while keeping the sanctuary to the right. The story of Ramayana starts on Shiva temple balustrade and continues to Brahma temple. On the balustrades in Vishnu temple there is a series of bar relief panels depicting the stories of Lord Krishna from Bhagavata Purana. The bar relief of Ramayana illustrate how Sita, the wife of Rama, is abducted by Ravana. The monkey king Hanuman brings his army to help Rama and rescue Sita. This story is also shown by the Ramayana ballet, regularly performed at full moon at Trimurti Open Air Theatre on the west side of the illuminated Grambanan complex. Local police, Brahmins, and Nevadas. On the other side of the narrative panels, the temple wall along the gallery was adorned with statues and reliefs of Devadas and Brahmin sages. The figures of Lokapolis, the celestial guardians of directions, can be found in Shiva temple. The Brahmin sage editors of Vedam were carved on Brahma temple wall, while in Vishnu temple the figures of male deities devatas are flanked by two of Zara. Grambanan panel, lion in niche flanked by two Kalpotharu trees each flanked by a pair of Kinaras or animals. Grambanan panel, lion and Kalpotharu. The lower outer wall of these temples was adorned with a row of small niches containing an image of Sinha, a lion, flanked by two panels depicting bountiful Kalpataru, Kalpavrk Shah, trees. These wish-fulfilling sacred trees, according to Hindu Buddhist belief, are flanked on either side by Kinaras or animals, such as pairs of birds, deer, sheep monkeys, horses, elephants etc. The pattern of lion in niche flanked by Kalpataru trees is typical in the Prambanan temple compound, thus it is called the Prambanan panel. The Rarajangarang legend. Main article, Roro underscore Jongarang. The multitude of temples scattered around Prambanan inspired the local legend of Rarajangarang. The popular legend of Rarajangarang is what connects the site of the Ratu Boko Palace, the origin of the Durga statue in the northern cell, chamber of the main shrine, and the origin of the Sutra temple complex nearby. The legend tells the story about Prince Bandung Bondowaso, who fell in love with Princess Rarajangarang, the daughter of King Boko. But the princess rejected his proposal of marriage because Bondang Bondowaso had killed King Boko and ruled her kingdom. Bondang Bondowaso insisted on the union, and finally Rarajangarang was forced to agree to a union in marriage, but she posed one impossible condition, Bondang must build her a thousand temples in only one night. The prince centered into meditation and conjured up a multitude of supernatural beings from the earth. Helped by these spirits, he succeeded in building 999 temples. When the prince was about to complete the condition, the princess spoke her palace mates and ordered the woman of the village to begin pounding rice and set a fire in the east of the temple, attempting to make the prince and the spirits believe that the sun was about to rise. As the conks began to grow, fooled by the light and the sounds of daybreak, the supernatural helpers fled back into the ground. The prince was furious about the trick and in revenge he cursed Rarajongar Aang, turning her to stone. She became the last and the most beautiful of the thousand statues. According to the traditions, the unfinished thousandth temple created by the 
of demons become the Suhu Temple compounds nearby. Suhu means thousands in Japanese, and the princess is the image of Draga in the north cell of the Shiva Temple of Brahmana, which is still known as Rarajangarang or Slender Maiden. Other temples around Brahmana Temples and archaeological sites in Brahmana Plain Suhu Buddhist temple within Brahmana Archaeological Park connected with local Rarajangarang legend. The Prambanan Plain spans between the southern slopes of Merapi Volcano in the north and the Suhu Mountain Range in the south, near the present border Yogi Akarta Province and Tluk Regency, Central Java. Apart from the Larajongarang complex, the Prambanan Plain, valley and hills around it is the location of some of the earliest Buddhist temples in Indonesia. Not far to the north are found the ruins of Bukra Temple, Lumbang Temple, and Suhu Temple. Further east is found Pausan Temple. To the west are found Kalisan Temple and Sari Temple, and further to the west is Sanbai Zari Temple. While to the south the Ratu Boko compound is on higher ground. The discoveries of archaeological sites scattered only a few miles away suggest that this area was an important religious, political, and urban center. North of the Larajongarai complex, Lambang, Buddhist style, consisting of one main temple surrounded by 16 smaller ones. Candy Bubra, Buddhist temple, rebuilt between 2013 and 2017. Suhu, Buddhist temple complex, older than Rorojongarang. A main sanctuary surrounded by many smaller temples. Well-preserved guardian statues, replicas of which stand in the central courtyard at the Jogjukrit. Candy Morandam. Hindu temple complex buried several meters under volcanic ashes, located northwest from Prambanam. Candy Plausen. Buddhist, probably 9th century. Thought to have been built by a Hindu king for his Buddhist queen. Two main temples with reliefs of Bada Zakvantara also rose of slender stupas. South of the Larajongarai complex. Watu Boko. Complex of fortified gates, bathing pools, and elevated walled stone enclosure, all located on top of the hill. Seiji. Buddhist temple decorated with reliefs concerning education. The baths and staircase are decorated with animal fables. Bang Unibo, a Buddhist temple with unique design of roof. Barong, a Hindu temple complex with large stepped stone courtyard, located on the slope of the hill. Ijo, a cluster of Hindu temple located near the top of Ijo Hill. The main temple houses a large lingam and yoni. Arkabagaisen. Seven Buddha and Bodhisattva statues, some collapsed, representing different poses and expressions. West of the Larajongarai complex. Klisan. 8th century Buddhist temple built in commemoration of the marriage of a king and his princess bride, ornamented with finely carved reliefs. Sori. Once a sanctuary for Buddhist priests. 8th century. Nine stipples at the top with two rooms beneath, each believed to be places for priests to meditate. Sam Baisari, 9th century Hindu temple discovered in 1966, once buried 6.5 meters under volcanic ash. The main temple houses Alinga and Yoni, and the walls around it displayed the images of Agasya, Durga, and Gainsha. Jabang. A small Hindu temple discovered in 1937 located near the Yogyakarta Northern Ring Road. The temple displays the statue of Gainsha an interesting carving of faces on the roof section. Kandi Gana, rich in statues, bar reliefs and sculpted stones. Frequent representations of children or dwarfs with raised hands. Located in the middle of a housing complex, under restoration since 1997. Candy Ketalan. Discovered in 1994 by sand diggers, 4 meters deep. Square base of main temple visible. Secondary temples not yet fully excavated. The Prambanan temple compound consists of 3 Trimurti temples, 3 main temples dedicated to Vishnu, Jiva, and Brahma. 
three Vahana temples, three temples in front of Trimurti temples dedicated to the Vahana of each gods, Guruda, Nandi, and Hamsa. Two Apit temples, two temples located between the rows of Trimurti and Vahana temples on north and south side. Four Keeler temples, four small shrines located on four cardinal directions right beyond the four main gates of inner zone. Four Putik temples, four small shrines located on four corners of inner zone. 224 Pravoda temples, hundreds of temples arranged in four concentric square rows, numbers of temples from inner row to outer row are, 44, 52, 60, and 68. The Prambanan compound also known as Rarajongarang complex, named after the popular legend of Rarajongarang. There were once 240 temples standing in the Shaivate temple complex, either big or small. 17, today, all of eight main temples and eight small shrines in the inner zone are reconstructed, but only two out of the original 224 Pravada temples are renovated. The majority of them have deteriorated, what is left are only scattered stones. The Prambanan temple complex consists of three zones, first the outer zone, second the middle zone that contains hundreds of small temples, and third the holiest inner zone that contains eight main temples and eight small shrines.